I bought a brand new mobile. It was custom made, it was a sight to see. Powerful motor, two highway wings. Pushy on button, and you could hear her saying, No, you can't catch me. Baby, you can't catch me. If you get too close, I'll be gone like a Is that right? Oh, yeah, I just learned it. Oh, you just yeah, learned it? You yeah. can't catch me. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I just thought maybe you've been doing it since the 60s. <laughs> well, we did do it in Blues by Five, but of course, Ed was singing it. Oh, okay. and I was I was the bass player. Right. Know, just chugging away. Hey, it's tell one me of those about songs. Blues by Five. What? Tell me about Blues by Five. Oh, what to tell? <laughs> what to tell? You know, when I, when I wanted to learn this song, I went down to A&B Sound and bought for an exorbitant price the... Uh, uh, what was for us the second Rolling Stones album, Rolling Stones Now. And man, when I got that album, I realized that we did every song on that album except for one. We didn't do Surprise, Surprise. I think there were 12 songs on the album. You know, our, our set list consisted of, uh, you know, the first couple of first couple of uh, Rolling Stones albums and the first Paul Butterfield album, the Herbs, Oils and Spices one. Mm -hmm. you know, th those were the songs that we did. Okay. Uh, stuff with a lot of harmonica in it and, uh, and a little bit of slide guitar that Norman played. And, you know, it, it was, I guess, I guess blues rock. Right, right. At the time, yeah. 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 And uh, so that was, that was the starting point for you of, of playing blues was sort of the Rolling Stones, uh, early Rolling Stones. Uh, Butterfield. Butterfield. Yeah. Chuck Berry too, or no more from the Stones? Oh, Chuck Berry was derived from the Stones. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Although I was familiar with him, um, you know, it was, it was the way the Stones did Chuck Berry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so Muddy and things like that was a little bit later that you got, you got well, into no, that through the Stones? Pre pretty much simultaneously. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we did Rolling Stone. Geez, you know, there's a recording of us doing Rolling Stone. Um, we recently had it remastered to um, to CD. I should give you a copy. But yeah, of that. I'd love to. Yeah, that's that's it. And this is a this is a thing that's got maybe seven, seven, eight songs. It's a recording that Derek Walsh made in two separate sessions. Um, and the first first sessions have Britt Haggerty on drums. The second session has uh, is is the sort of by five with uh, Richard Moore on second guitar and Ron Flatman on drums. And was Mark Johnson ever in that group too? No, no. Okay, that's later, right? Eh? Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, he's still be in grade school. <laughs> oh, okay. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, I met up with Mark in 1975 um, and the two Marks. And that was when, when me and Ed. Mark Comfort being the other one. Yeah, yeah right. Okay. Yeah, uh, and, and that was the John DeCon crew band in 75 through 77. Okay, who was in John DeCon crew? Mark Johnson, Mark Comerford, um, Ed at the beginning, and me on bass. Right. Uh, briefly, Randy Binder passed through as, uh, as a guitar player, so oh, guitar yeah. player. He was a friend of Derek Walsh. Right. He's, and uh, Derek, was he was around in those days too then? Oh, yeah. Playing yeah. harp? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, Derek had, uh, Derek, you know, Derek passed through the uh, the remnants of Blues by Five in 1967, 68. Uh, he had been playing harp through high school. He's, you know, he's my age. Yeah. Um, and he had been in jug bands in the in the sort of 60, 66, 67 period. Again, with Ron Flatman and some other folks. So when I came back to Victoria in 1972, Derek was in a blues band called Harry the Nat with uh, Russell, no, Russell, who was uh, Chris Butterfield, who was, I recognize that name. Yeah, previous to him, a uh, guy named Ron Martin. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so Blues by Five was formed in what year then? 65. 65. Yeah. So you really were right in there with the rolling, original Rolling Stones and Butterfield first album came out in 65, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, John Hammond. Yeah, yeah okay. that Big City Blues album, John right. Hammond and yes. So Many Roads, the, yes. those, those electric John Hammond albums, yeah, they were they were influential too. Yeah. And so uh, playing slide guitar, you got into that through uh, Rolling Stones as well? No, I didn't play guitar at all in those days. I just played 
No, but I mean, maybe was that the original influence? Well, you know what? I, what really turned me on to slide guitar was uh, with, with Mark and Mark in uh, in John DeConcrew in '75. We all discovered Hound Dog Taylor. That was what really turned me on. Also, was Hound Dog not Elmore? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. That that was what really turned me on to slide guitar and made me want to play guitar. Right. What did you play? If you didn't play guitar, bass. I played bass. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I started out life as a bass player. Yeah. I, I had dabbled in guitar as a kid, but uh, yeah. I had a washed up bass and a jug band before Blues by Five was formed. We had a we, we had a jug band called the New Stranger Blues Band. Uh, you know, it was a I played washed up bass. Norm played acoustic guitar. Ed, Ed sang and uh, and played acoustic guitar. And Ed was just a live wire. He was yeah. just just jumping. showman jumping around. Mm -hmm. Just belting out the vocals. Well, that was what he was like in Blues by Five in uh, 1965. You know, he uh, he took a tip from James Brown and uh, and took a tip from Mick Jagger too. You know, he, he'd get down on the floor with the microphone and uh, and we were a, we were a band that uh, was extending songs when everybody else was doing sort of radio, you know, two minute, fifty two second versions of songs. We were extending songs. To okay. You know, seven, eight, ten minutes. Right. And, and Ed was part of that, you know, prolonged versions of Pain in My Heart. We had this rave up version of, uh, of, uh, of a song off that was Shaken Out, Tom Rush song. Oh, right, the one was Shaken I can't keep from crying. Oh, right, yeah, yeah uh -huh, uh -huh. I can't keep from crying sometimes. Yeah, Ed did a, you know, great rave up version. Yeah. Well, that what's shaking album, that'd be actually a little earlier, wouldn't it? That'd probably be contemporary with the Butterfield album. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right about the same time. Uh -huh. Yeah. What's shaking? Folk Song 65, that was another one. Oh, yeah. Uh, it had a version of Born in Chicago with uh, Bloomfield playing keyboard. Oh. So, uh, through the 70s, uh, you said you were working a bit with the, what was the name of the group again? Harry the Nat. Harry so that the was Nat. Uh, Derek Walsh, Bob Jarek, um, uh, Chris Butterfield, and uh, well, I, I replaced a, a bass player, and uh, and soon after the drummer was replaced by uh, George Dixon, father of Josh. Yes, yes, now uh -huh. deceased. Right. And I he in turn was replaced by Russell Godfrey. Oh no, he was re he was replaced by. Uh, Michael Balf, huh. who had played, he played with Phil Rosner. Uh, he, Michael, I think, had come up from California with, you know, Bob Lesher and those guys, those Blues Union guys. Okay. And uh, he was pursuing a career in fine art. Uh, yeah, he was a great drummer. He, he moved away to go to art school in Nova Scotia. And yeah, when Michael Balf left, that was when Russell Godfrey came on board. Uh, and you know he stopped playing drums around that time as he was discovering Celtic music, and his knees were bothering him. Ah, so okay. you know between an interest in Celtic music, wanting to play guitar, uh, sing, and, uh, and and not and get away from the physicality of playing drums, he he wanted to stop playing. Bob Jarek and Chris Butterfield had to get serious about school. I think they were in fourth year. Um, they were, you know getting close to graduating, and uh, Derek went off to work in the woods. Uh, and that was kind of the end of that band in uh, in '74. Mm -hmm. and, okay. Uh, you know, I muddled about a bit. I played with Britt Haggerty and Joe Pagnotta and Jamie Kinlock. Up uh, in the Kent st old Kent Studios and stuff like that. Yeah, and the British Public Schools Club. Boy, you know, and some legions. Uh, yeah, as, and uh, play still, blues? As, still as a bass player. No, uh, uh, sort of Rock rockabilly, yeah. uh, early country stuff. Right, because yeah. that's sort of what Britt Haggerty was into. At, yeah, at that time, and and, and continued to be. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, Jamie Kinlock, who went on to play with uh, uh, that, that that incredible, you know, sort of barnyard beatnik guy uh, out of Vancouver. Ray Kondo. Ray Kondo. Oh, okay. Yeah. I recognize the Jamie Kinlock man. Yeah, yeah, he's a, he's a really cool guitar player. Oh. Uh, now some other guys I met early in my days here at Victoria were uh, Chris Blue. Oh yeah, he he passed briefly through um, um, John DeConcaru. Okay. Very very briefly. But uh, Tony Wilkinson. Yeah. Crazy yeah. Tony. 
Yeah, uh, we we played with Tony. Sharon and I played with Tony in, um, I, I guess, the first band that Sharon and I played in together oh. called Honeybee. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh -huh. So Honeybee is 1977, right after, you know, leaving, um, uh, after leaving John DeConqueroo and Mark and Mark were putting together Uncle Wiggly. Um, Sharon and I were slower off the mark because, you know, well, I was becoming a guitar player and she was getting into being a bass player, but, you know, kind of about that same time. So, yeah, uh, our, our first, the first time we worked together in a band was, uh, was Honey Bee with me playing guitar and Sharon playing bass, Tony Wilkinson on keys. Derek Walsh on harp, no? Uh, Derek Walsh on harp. Another guitar player, a guy named Art Jennings, who's long ago moved to Vancouver area. Uh, and uh, Mike Stewart passed through okay. through the band. Um, oh, are, I guess. Hey, <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great, John. We have a little bit anyway. Hey, there you go. You're on. You're on camera. Oh, <laughs> hey, Tom, how are you doing? Good. Come on in, John. Okay. Yeah. You have found the place. Yes. Good. We found it already. Yeah. How are you? Good. Good to see you, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you think? Should we get to work? You bet you. Let's do it. Do it. <laughs> I know you can do it. Come on, get to it. There you go. <laughs> 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 <laughs>